The Park Central Hotel Boiler Explosion in Hartford, February 18, 1889. The Great Flood of 1955 that destroyed properties from Farmington to Waterbury. The Hartford Civic Center roof collapse of January 1978. The Mianus River Bridge collapse also of 1978. These were all terrible disasters that fell upon the good people of Connecticut. But the worst disaster of all in this great state's history happened in Hartford on July 6th, 1944. The story you are about to hear now, Little Miss 1565, is part of our show, Nightfall on the Nutmeg State, taped live at the Westport Library in Westport, Connecticut, on Friday the 13th of October, 2023. Couldn't have been more than seven and a half, eight minutes at most. That's, that's all it took. The longest eight minutes of my life. I ran into the scene still wearing my face paint, putty nose, and big shoes. That bucket of water in my hand. Oh boy, was it hot under the big top. So hot. But we had a show to do. A Valenda does not complain. We started during our act, I think. I was on top of the pyramid. It was just a small circle at first. My cats, oh, they knew. The pumas especially. And they were trying to tell me. Long before it happened, they knew something was wrong. Merlevens, our band leader. How brave he and the band were. The brass band is the only alarm a circus has, you know. The circus. I just wanted to take her to the circus. You're going to take me to the circus, Daddy? I guess I can call you Daddy now. Will you be my Daddy? I'll take you to the circus, honey. I'll take you. When I lit the match, I I saw him. He came to me. The red man. Was I going nuts? Am I nuts? Is that what you want me to say? Daddy, are we going? Are we going to the circus? I've never been to the circus. Hello, everyone. Well, Hartford this afternoon suffered one of the greatest catastrophes in its history. And during a matinee performance of Ringling Brothers' Barnum and Bailey Circus, the big tent suddenly burst into flame and burned to the ground, causing more than a hundred deaths and unestimated casualties. WTIC's George Bull and myself were on the ground within a few minutes after the conversation had leveled the big show, while smoke was still rising from the horrible mass of canvas and coal and heat. Now, now that the invasion is actually underway, I don't believe there's one of us who doesn't feel a deep personal obligation to every man on the... <sighs> That's enough of that noise. War bonds. As if I have money to spare. Daddy? Can I call you Daddy? Uh, hand me that newspaper there, would you, honey? Here. Thank you. Oh, Daddy. Uh, you really mustn't call me that, dear. Then who will be my daddy? I'm your uncle, remember? But I don't have a daddy anymore. Or a mommy. Or a grandma or a grandpa. All I have is you. Oh, let me see. Uh, What? The newspaper. I want to see the ad for the circus. What's this now? Let me see. Let me see, please. You want to go, eh? Maybe we should go. I'm sure we'd both enjoy it. Make us forget our troubles for a while. Uh, Let's see. Who is on the bill? The Flying Willanders. Wow. Uh, Emmett Kelly, the clown. He'll be there. I love him. Uh, Madame Kovar, the tamer of jungle cats. Wow, wow. The elephants, the bears, the dancing animals, the acrobats. All kinds of thrills guaranteed. I want to go. I want to go. It was hot as blazes, even for July, when we pulled into Hartford. I laid out half my weary willy hobo outfit. I put on the other half and joined some of my co-workers for a few hands of cards.
You want in, Kelly? Don't mind if I do, Carl. Why do we always play with this clown? Emmett, ain't it a bit too warm to be wearing all that grease paint on your face? Well, I have no poker face without it, Madame Kovar. Oh, unfair. <laughs> Carl, why must you waste our money on these foolish games? I need to find some kind of excitement whenever I'm not on the tightrope. My life is at risk more than anyone else in our act. I am on the very top of the pyramid. You don't see me looking for petty thrills. Oh, come on. We're talking penny stakes here. We are making very good money. The flying Valendas are known the world over. Yet we are still here, kicking around the sawdust and the elephant dung. Ah, the circus is in our blood. As if you would know how to live any other way. Here's to that. There's... It's the only way for me. Pair of aces. Ugh, damned clown. Don't make that face at me. It's the only one I have. Is anyone else getting the feeling? You know, that feeling? Yeah. Well, I don't want to talk about it. My cats are restless. Titania especially. I don't like it. The show yesterday. The early show. Say nothing more, please. It's bad luck, as we circus folk know. Whenever a show's been cancelled, something bad happens. It wasn't anybody's fault. There was train trouble. It's not our fault. I don't like ah, it. Ah, come on, May. Don't be so gloomy. That's my job. All right, you roustabouts call yourselves headliners? We have a show to do. Hey, you ain't ringmaster till we enter the big top, Fred. Go put some ice in your lemonade. Uh, do shut up, Fred. Right, give over. It's my turn to shuffle. <laughs> Can anyone spot me a few pennies? I'm good for it. Pull up a chair. Daddy? I mean, Uncle Walter? Yes? Is it true? Uh, is what true? You won't be able to keep me. Come, let's enjoy the circus. Aunt Jean made you promise before you passed away. And... Before she passed away. I've gone from home to home. Now there's no one but you. I was hoping I could stay with you. Let's not talk of this now. I won't cost much to keep. I can pick them, those blackberries growing in your yard. Then I can sell them, see? I can help. Please don't send me to one of those. You're a good kid. I like you. You're my own blood, and as my own mother used to say, blood is... Ah! Hey, fella! Why don't you watch where you're going? You nearly knocked it to the ground! Gee, I'm awful sorry. Look where you're going! I heard you the first time. I mean, yes. I mean, yes, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's just that it's so hot out now, and I'm not thinking straight. You okay, kid? I'm okay. Um, with the lighting department, part of the crew, you see, it's, it's so hot and it's even hotter with the lights and all, and I'm sorry, I, I really am. Just be more careful, pal. Someone could get hurt. Yes, yes, I understand, I, I know, I understand. I'm gonna get on my way, and enjoy the show. Watch where you're going, watch where you're going, the nincompoop. Why don't you watch where you're going? You know where I'm going? Good God, it's hot. It's hot and I got the itch. I got, I got the itch. Enjoy the show. Yeah, enjoy the show, you little... I wonder what would happen. I wonder. I wonder what would happen. You... No, 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 no. Do not run. Do not run from me. Please. Please don't hurt me. What is that between your fingers? What, this? This? Tell me. This? You, you know, it's, it's just a little match. And what are you going to do with it? I don't know. That girl laughed at you, just like they all do. Yeah, I, I can't take that. I, I just can't. Well, what will you do? 
gee, I, I don't know. My head sure is throbbing. I can't, I can't stop. You'll feel much better when you do it. It sure is hot. You'll feel much better. It's the only time I feel really alive, although sometimes I wish I wasn't. My head, it sure is hot. So, what will you do? Jesus, you sound like my old man, that rotten son of a bitch. <laughs> 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 As they say, the show must go on. And so it will, after these few words from our sponsors. Now, back to Little Miss 1565. Welcome, welcome, welcome! And welcome, good people of Hartford, Connecticut! Moms and dads, boys! and girls to the one and only most spectacular, most thrilling, most exceptional, the first and last word in popular entertainment, the world famous Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey Circus! Now, the Big Top could hold as many as 9,000 people. I remember seeing even the highest sections of the bleachers were pretty full that day. There were three rings inside the Big Top, and the show was just getting started. It was about 2.15. The wild animal acts always went on first. Ladies and gentlemen, that great mistress of mystery, that mystifying magnate of the fiercest man-eating cats of Africa and Asia, I give you Madame Covor! Aha! All right, girls, let's give him a good show. Oh, I didn't mean that, love. All for the show, pet. Ha-ha! Oh! I think we need to clip those nails, Titania. Back! Back, I say! You are so adorable, Titania. Ha-ha! Ah! How does that little lady handle all those scary leopards? She's trained her whole life, I imagine. Divert your eyes to the center ring. Behold! The death-defying jaw, the dropping, thrill-addicted antics of those unflappable, unbeatable bastions of balance, those hale and hallowed, handsome, happy-go-lucky, high-steppers of the high wire, we give you the great flying Valenda! Oh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's go. One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, patron saint of the high via, Lady Luck, please protect our family. I love you, Carl. And I love you, my darling. As much as you love the via? You have to ask. Hey, up! Look, look high above. You will observe there are 35 feet between the high wire and the very solid ground. And no net to catch them if they should. <laughs> and now they will perform the stunt that has made them famous the world over. The heart swelling, head swimming, human pyramid. There's nothing to catch them. Oh, you mustn't worry. These things are all very carefully staged. Nothing bad can happen. Oh, oh, the pretty lady. Relax. It will be all right. She's up on top of them. Higher than any of them. I, I, I can't look. You're being silly. Oh, what's this? Look who it is. 
is. If everybody loves a clown, why is he so miserable? That's none other than Mr. Emmett Kelly, better known as that lovable layabout, that hilarious hobo, that merciful miscreant of the midway, Very Billy. What are you doing down there, Billy? I tell you, everybody wants in on the act. Shoo, shoo, I say shoo. During the tour that summer, I came up with a great gag that everyone seemed to enjoy. I would walk under the Walendas far below on the ground, daintily holding a handkerchief to catch their fall while they did their act. It was the last time I heard the sound of laughter that day. How are we all doing? Good? Good? Steady boys? You're worried about the boys, but I'm on top. We do all the work, honey, while you just sit pretty. First of all, I am not sitting. Second, something smells. Herman hasn't bathed all week, have you, Herman? Ugh, whew. That isn't what I meant. How? Yes, my dear? I see something. Yeah? Yeah. What is it? Okay, Actum, listen to me. What is it? There is a circular hole in the roof of the tent. I can see it clearly from up here. What? And it is getting larger. A burning hole. Did you say burning? All right. Do as I say, we must not panic. Okay, I smell it now. Smoke. God have mercy. <laughs> oh, all right, honey. Then I count. <clears throat> Five. <clears throat> we will form the emergency disengagement maneuver. <clears throat> Careful now. One, two, three, four. Hold, hold, hold steady, man. Got you, Helen. And five. Hey, is that part of the show, Daddy? I, I, I don't know. I, I suppose. All that smoke up there. And, 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 and. It's okay. It, it, it's okay. You, you just stay calm now. We've got to get out of here. Stripes. Stars and stripes. Oh, Lord. Stars and stripes. Oh, no. Stars and stripes forever? Oh, dear God. In the world of the circus, the last thing you want to hear is the band playing the Stars and Stripes forever. When the band leader decides to strike that one up, it serves as our alarm, our code red, an internal memo to hit the deck and get to safety. There's no other reason to play it at a circus performance. Get these cats out the big top. All right, there's not much time. Ha! Ha! Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please remain calm. I repeat, please remain calm. Do not jump from the bleachers. There are multiple exits located Fred, at the each. The exits are all jammed. People are being trampled. I know. Damn it! What do you want me to we do? We have to help these children. We can get them out. Nay, damn it! Get the hell out of here before you fall. Make yourself useful, Fred. Help me. What? How? We can. <laughs> we can save them! <laughs> we can get some of them through if they can crawl over the animal exit cages! What? Are you insane? Stop eating the Yeah, watch me! Come, come, sweetheart! I got you! Oh. oh, it's alright, darling. Come this way. I'll protect you. Come now. 168 people perished that day. Most of them women and children. 168. Now that number would have been a lot higher if it weren't for Madame Kovar's bravery. Guess no one can recall how many kids she took to safety. She barely got out of there alive herself. No one seems to remember that. But I do. I received a lot of attention later for a photograph that was taken of me still in my clown makeup, carrying that bucket of water. That was Life Magazine's Picture of the Week. But I was no hero. I was of no real help. It's 
funny how that happens. No one remembers May Kovar's heroism, or that she survived the circus fire, or that she was mauled to death by one of her own big cats five years later. Carl and Helen, and the rest of the Wolendas, made it out safely. But like May Kovar, Carl had defied death one time too many when he fell from his beloved wire off a ten-story hotel while performing a stunt in Puerto Rico in 1978. No. Not one of our people died that day, which made it all the worse. Every single person killed that day was a part of our audience. Our customers. It wasn't for lack of trying, but no one was able to put out the fire. You see, the canvas of our big top was waterproofed using a mixture of paraffin wax and gasoline. A common practice at that time. Waterproof, yes quite the opposite of fireproof. People who were, weren't consumed by the flames or smoke were trampled to death or pelted by the rain of burning, melting wax, which maimed and disfigured many a victim. The people inside, their screams. It almost sounded like, like laughter at first, but then it started to sound like dogs being beaten. We had no idea of the extent of the casualties, but then we heard the sound that froze all of us. One siren after another. With each wail of the sirens, the more aware I became of the smell of burnt flesh. Doctors and nurses and first aid people in white jackets suddenly appeared. I walked among the ruins as charred body after body was carried out from where the grandstand and bleacher had been. I saw what was left of a, of a bird clown doll lying at what had once been the hippodrome track. It was at that moment I was no longer able to hold back my tears. Many victims were so badly burned beyond recognition that their sexes couldn't even be determined. One pretty young girl, she couldn't have been older than seven or eight, was never identified or claimed. She was badly trampled upon and ultimately died from burns, but her face remained without disfigurement. Known only by the number on her mortuary tag, Little Miss 1565. She had her picture run in every magazine in the US and Canada, but to no avail. No one ever claimed her body. In the end, the Hartford Fire Department buried her, and every year on the anniversary of her disaster, they placed flowers on her grave. The city of Hartford received a settlement from Ringling Brothers for over four million dollars, which took the circus over eight years to fully pay off. The funds were paid to various victims and their families. Name's Walter. I am a survivor of the Hartford Circus Fire of 1944, but I would use the word survivor very loosely. From what I hear, I have received the largest settlement of any of the survivors. Survivors. <laughs> Daddy? I was badly disfigured. I am badly disfigured. Even after many operations and skin grafts, I dare not leave the house. Not in the light of day. Daddy. Why? Why should I leave the house so people can see the monster I've become? You're not a monster, Daddy. I I'm not. You're not a monster. But why did you leave me behind? Because... Because I was a coward. I could pick the blackberries in the yard. I could sell them. I'm sorry. I'll always be sorry. I forgive you. I couldn't afford to keep you. I was too poor. Daddy? Please don't call me that. I forgive you. When you fell, fell from the bleacher. I forgive when you, Daddy. When you fell, I left you there. Daddy, I forgive you. I left you there. I could have easily saved you, carried you out in my arms, but I left you there. I forgive you. I left you there to, to die. 
It's all right, Daddy. I left you there, but a- as soon as I escaped, I was torn apart. I, I went back to find you. I'm right here, Daddy. I went Daddy. back in, but I-, I couldn't find you. I looked and looked, and as I looked, the melting wax poured down from above. And, and, and my face. Daddy. My hands. Daddy. My face. Oh, Daddy. My hands. Poor Daddy. They found you eventually, though. I saw your photo. Saw it in all the papers. I finally saw. I saw you for the little angel that you always were. It's not too late, Daddy. I'm afraid it is, darling. Daddy? Daddy? Daddy! Daddy? Years later, a mental patient named Robert C.G. claimed he had been hired by the circus for a few days as a teenager in 1944 and started the fire for a thrill. His story sounded plausible since he was convicted of arson and other crimes, but he was known to contradict himself so no one could tell for certain if he was indeed the one. He later denied it, so who knows. Am I going nuts? Am I nuts? Am I? Is that what you want me to say? I didn't say anything. Well, what should I do? You know what to do. Stop. Stop looking at me like that. You've done it before. You can do it again. Please, don't make me. Well, they're still laughing. Let them laugh. I don't want to. You know what to do. (laughs) It, it, It sure is hot. the 
Little Miss 1565. The cast featured in this episode include Eric Davy Gislason as Emmett Kelly, Alan LaForest as Carl Willenda, Casey LaForest as Helen Willenda, James Reeser as Fred Bradna, James Kleinman as Walter, Mary Murphy as Little Miss, Michael Pate as Robert C.G., and the part of Madame May Kovar was played by me, Ali Silva. The song The Fair's Moving On by Guy Fletcher and Doug Flett was performed by Martina De Silva, accompanied by Nico Slater. Little Miss 1565 was written by Sylvan Sandoval. Our live show and podcast are produced by Gustavo Rodriguez and me for Fireside Mystery Productions. The live performance of Nightfall on the Nutmeg State was supported by Verso Studios at the Westport Library in Westport, Connecticut. Our musical score was performed by Nico Slater. Our lead sound effects designer and engineer was Greg Russ, Additional sound design by Ricardo Delgado and Ali Silva. This series was directed by the team of Liz Lizer, Casey LaForest, and Ali Silva. Our fabulous fireside production coven includes Liz Lizer, Casey LaForest, and Mary Murphy. Jason Graves composed our theme music, and I manage our audio post-production. Want to support us? Become an FMT Patreon patron today by going to patreon.com slash firesidemysterytheater or just follow the link from our website. It's a great way to stoke our fires and hear early releases, Patreon-only content, and enjoy other rewards as you help to keep our fireside flickering. If you fancy, give us a rating and review, and you can follow us on social media at Fireside Mystery. Coming up next from Fireside Mystery Theater, a woman embarks on a righteous crusade to help the aged and infirm, armed with nothing but a pitcher of lemonade and maybe just a pinch of arsenic. The gory details will all be revealed in our next torrid tale, The Confession of Amy Archer Gilligan. Step right up, my friends, and you may just win yourself the big prize. But you know you best be sure to mind the shadows.